Apple's been working on a display that is literally going to revolutionize the entire display industry with not only a massive 7K resolution, but also with mini LED XDR brightness and a built-in A13 chip to support the latest Apple ecosystem features, even if you're using an Intel machine. So in this video, I'm gonna break down all of the leaks and rumors and explain how it's all gonna work, including the pixel count, the Thunderbolt cable situation, the features, the cost, and of course, the release date. Now getting right into the leaks, it all began back in December when Dylan DKT leaked that there were three new Apple displays in the works, a 24 inch, a 27 inch, and a 32 inch Pro Display XDR successor. Now of course, we know we finally got the 27 inch studio display at Apple's March event, but that still leaves the other two, so let's jump into the rest of the leaks. On March 4th, 9to5Mac released some exclusive leaks concerning a new display that has a higher resolution than the Pro Display XDR, which is crazy because that model already has 6K resolution. And apparently, 9to5Mac was able to confirm with their sources that the new display has 7K resolution, and in their opinion, they think Apple can either keep the display size the same 32 inches, but with higher pixels per inch, or go with a larger larger 36 inch size. But before I give you guys my thoughts on this question, we've got some more leaks to go through. On April 17th, Mark Gurman released his Power On newsletter and discussed a brand new display coming. Yes, he said that a new 7K display is in the works, which will probably be announced later this year alongside the new Mac Pro. And that's literally from last week, so it shows Mark's confidence in the Mac Pro coming this year instead of next year, which is something that Ming Chu Kuo predicted. And in terms of the details, he believes it'll have 7K resolution, potentially a webcam, and some new iOS ties that were featured in the low-end studio display monitor. And if you really think about it, it wouldn't make sense for Apple to release the display by itself, so it would have to be coming alongside another high-end Mac. And the only Mac that it makes sense to launch with is of course the Mac Pro, since that's exactly what Apple did last time in 2019 with the Pro Display XDR. So because of that, I think this new display will be a direct replacement of that 6K display, except with 7K resolution and some new features like a built-in webcam. But before I get into all of those specifics, including the exact resolution and size of the display that I'm expecting, there is still one more display that is unaccounted for from Dylan DKT's leak, which would be a 24 inch display. Well, first of all, Mark Gurman recently said that he doesn't expect there to be a new lower priced 24 inch display because he doesn't expect Apple to want to offer a small display like that anymore with them really trying to push the 27 inch studio display. But wait, there might actually be another 27 inch studio display update in the works because the most reliable Apple display analyst in the game, Ross Young, has been predicting a new 27 inch mini LED display for months already already, which he initially thought was an iMac Pro, but later admitted that it might just be an external display with a built-in chip. Now, when I asked him about it a couple of months ago, he let me know that a new 27-inch display was coming in June with a release date of as late as September. And he also said he expected it to launch alongside the Mac Pro in June. So what I ended up doing a couple of days ago was ask him if that display might actually be the new 7K display that Mark recently leaked, but nope. He said that there is still one more 27-inch display with mini LED technology that is in the works. And of course, it's not the studio display that we just got, which lacks mini LED. So with that said, I've been thinking about it a lot and I think I've finally figured out how Apple's display lineup is gonna work. We're gonna have the $1,600 27-inch studio display at the low end and then a 27-inch studio display pro for around $3,000 to $3,800, which will basically be an upgraded version of the low end display, but with mini LED and potentially 120 hertz pro motion technology, making it a huge deal for people who like smooth animations and gaming. 
And then finally, we're gonna have the new 7K Pro Display XDR, which will start at around $6,000 with the stand, which is basically the same price as the current 6K model, if you include the stand, of course. And now, let's get into all of the technical specs that I'm expecting it to come with. First of all, I think the display size will stay the same exact 32-inch size that we already have in the current Pro Display XDR, with the same chassis, the same lattice pattern design on the back, but maybe with some other unique design details. To me, this makes the most sense because I believe Apple will be reusing the lattice pattern on the new Mac Pro because it's iconic and is just a great design that makes sense for great cooling. And on the plus side, reusing the same exact 32 inch chassis will save Apple a lot of money, which they'll probably need to do because making a groundbreaking new 7K panel is not gonna be cheap. I think this makes sense because if Apple chooses to stick to the same 218 PPI as before, the display size would go up to 36 inches, which I think is way too big because the 32 inch model is already very big and heavy. And I personally think that it's big enough. Instead, I believe that Apple will simply pack that 7K resolution into the same 32 inch panel size and focus on giving it more pixels per inch. And if you think that's crazy, Apple's latest 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros both now come with 254 pixels per inch. So if we gave the new 7K display a target of 254 PPI, that would give us a new resolution of 7086 by 3986 pixels, being slightly higher than 7K resolution and giving us a massive 28,244,796 pixels, which is absolutely insane. And if you want some perspective on how much that really is, it's basically 3.4 times more pixels pixels than standard 4K, it's 91.5% more pixels than 5K, and 38.7% more pixels than 6K. And the craziest thing of all is that I believe they're gonna be able to power it with a single cable. Yes, just one Thunderbolt 4 Pro cable from the display going to your Mac. And I am sure of that because I believe this display will stick to the standard 60 Hertz refresh rate because it'll be meant for the real professionals doing photography and videography work who don't really care that much about 120 Hertz. And now if you're wondering why I think this display will revolutionize the industry, it's because there's gonna be nothing else like it for around the same price. Dell did create their 32 inch 8K monitor a couple of years back, and it's now on sale for $3,800, which honestly isn't bad, but it has a couple of problems that the new 7K Pro Display XDR is going to fix. First of all, it actually requires you to connect two display cables at the same time because when it was made, there wasn't enough bandwidth in one cable to make it work. But with Apple's 7K display, one Thunderbolt 4 Pro cable is gonna be all you'll need because of display stream compression support. And if you really think about it, the Dell 8K display actually has around 7.7K resolution, which is about 17.5% more pixels than the 7K Pro Display XDR, so it's not that big of a deal going from 7K to Dell's 8K. Going further, even though the Dell has higher resolution, the major drawback is that it's only rated for up to 400 nits of brightness because it just uses a basic LCD display panel while the 7K Pro Display XDR will use mini LED technology to give you up to 1600 nits of brightness for true HDR playback and editing, which is something that's not possible on Dell's 8K display. And of course, it'll lead to much better contrast and deeper blacks even while not using HDR. And then finally, the design and build quality of the Pro Display is obviously gonna be much nicer, especially since Apple is likely to pack in a built-in webcam 
and special iOS-based features as well. And once again, I think it's gonna be showing off alongside the Mac Pro at WWDC, and maybe even alongside the Studio Display Pro with 120 Hz if Apple decides to give their users a couple of different options based on what they like. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts on this new display down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one and check out one of those two right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.